So I'm down in Brighton here for the Labour Party conference. In fact, no, I'm not for the Labour Party conference. I'm here for a fringe event organised by Momentum happening over four days called The World Transformed. I thought, wow, it's got to be worth going to Brighton to see the world being transformed. And so far, it's been absolutely fantastic. I went to a session this morning with, with my dear old mate Russell Brand and Labour's Shadow Health Secretary, uh, John Ashworth. Hi, this is my friend John Rogers. All right, John mate. Rogers taught me about socialism right. some time ago. How did you find that, guys? Yeah, I thought it was good, it was good. I really, I thought it was a good open debate, some pretty long questions. Just standing in the street in Brighton, this is the kind of thing that happens at the Labour Party conference, and this is a measure of how the world has been transformed by Jeremy Corbyn and Momentum, is that I bumped into Chunky Mark, the artist taxi driver, just wandering around Brighton. What are you doing in, uh, what are you doing in Brighton? Right, OK, so the Labour Party, Party conference is on. It's like a conference, but it's a fucking festival, mate. No, seriously, it's a festival. You've got people like Russell Brand, you've got Loki, you've got Ken Loach. You know, you've got raves going off. I don't know if you was here Saturday night, but there was like they had a DJ. They was whacking on like proper hardcore tunes. Jeremy come out and they was like dun 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 dun. dun. They're going mental. They're going absolutely. It's the fire brigade. God save the fire brigade. You know what I mean? Theresa May over in fucking swanning around Florence in a in a Maserati. Do you know what I mean? Tupperware Theresa. I've been calling her trees of Mugabe, actually. Right. No, after the Henry, trying to get the, she got the Henry VIII um, through, well, yeah. which is like, a, a, you know, a grip on democracy. She also put through like a, every sort of like committee bill has to have a, a, one extra conservative on it. So like they all get passed. You yeah, know, Brighton's, it's kicking off. Do you know what I mean? It was all down there. The other night, it was like passing the duchy. It was all out. There was bombs going off, picnic blankets, jam sandwiches. It was mental, mate. I'm, I'm serious. It was like, this isn't. Is this a political conference? Do you know what I mean? But look, they're talking about like really important stuff. You know, uh, uh, housing. They're talking about um, earlier on drug addiction. You know, with Russell Brand, that was amazing. You know, to come and you heard those people stand up and give their testimonies. You know. It's all inclusive, you know, you've got uh, loads of delegates coming now where they used to just, you know, before it was really sort of like narrow, the chain of commands, you know, it went all the way to the top, decisions were taken at the top. Now they're trying to democratise the whole party. What they want is they want it like members led. Do you know what I mean? This party belongs to the members. It's incredible. It's like, a, it's transformative politics. You know, but, but like creating this kind of like, festival or carnival of ideas you know like that's really sort of like spiritually that's incredible for the country you know and what implications that could have in the outer world when you see like bernie sanders movements you know it's really amazing you know it's something that um, um you know it, it, it's 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 a beginning you know what i mean but it's like like when i spoke to barry gardner he says he, upset. he said i want to implement this manifesto I want to make these policies that we're talking about, free education, you know, £10 minimum wage, no more in work poverty, uh, uh, housing, you know, I want to nationalise the rail, you know, I want to, uh, uh, you know, pay public sector workers and get those scamming bastards, do you know what I mean? John McDonald, like, like the financial transaction tax, you know, just a little bit, 0.05% off of Amazon. The guy took £7 billion out in dividends. You know, this isn't sort of like a massive, uh, uh, you know, they, they're scaring us all that, like, it's a, like some kind of communist revolution. It's not. It's like basic social justice. You know what I mean? It's basic equality, which everyone should aspire to. Because all these people that we talk about, they're our mums. Do you know what I mean? They're, they're our care workers are our family. They're our friends. Do you know what I mean? The firefighters, look at us, do you know what I mean? Whatever we do, we're, we're scamming around like trying to be a little bit creative, do you know what I mean? Looking for a shilling or trying to do something. It's fucking difficult out there, do you know what I mean? We need to, you know, we don't need everything centralised in these massive sort of like conglomerates, whether it's fucking Netflix or whether it's like the Odeon cinema who wouldn't play an independent film even if like you shit on them, you know what I mean? It's, this is what we need. We need some kind of... Uh, society that is inclusive for everyone because at the moment it's not and it's not just like because the two things the Tories have given us imagine that right austerity and Brexit that's going to be their legacy you know and that's appalling because 
people have suffered under austerity and they're going to suffer under this Brexit. Because, I mean, we look to the world like a shower, do you know what I mean? We got like, I don't know, we got um, uh, terrible sort of like uh, economic doom coming because of it. But it's also a moral, it's kind of like an economic abyss, but it's also a moral abyss that we're going into because it seems like the Brexit that which the Tories offered was along uh, 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 racist lines, do you know what I mean? It was fought on immigration, which is an appalling thing. You know what I mean? Like, got, like people out, like she's out in fucking Italy in a Maserati, do you know what I mean? The Italians are out there, Bozo the fucking clown walking around, they got frescoes and uh, uh, the Renaissance, you know, and, and the Italians are just laughing. With all of that, she stood in front of a, Maybot stood in front of a blank wall with some bland statements on it. Which is just uh, like, you know, they, they, the Italians look at us, you, you see, you got fucking nothing. You haven't even got a B-Day. Do you know what I mean? The Italians think like, because like, I've got Italians in my, in my family, you know, nonna, granny and grand, nonna and nonna. And they're like, what are you going to do? You, 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 know, you don't even got the dignity to wash your fucking ass if you've done a shit. You're walking around with your pants in your knickers all day with shit in it. You know what I mean? What's the, what's the look at the state of the country? We need B days, mate. We need fucking B days. We need to like up our game. What else have you got in your manifesto, Mark? B days. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true, isn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Wash your ass. It's like when they come over here, the Italians, they've got to take their trousers off, get in, get in my bath, mate, and get the fucking shower out. They don't like it, do they? This is our debate at the Labour Party conference has changed in the 20 years I've been coming here. We never talked about B days in the past. And I always thought that is what is missing. We need more B days. And we need Chunky Mark doing his first ever stand-up gig. Well, we'll here. be talking about B days. You'll be talking about B days there. I used to do comedy here with Russell. Actually, we used to do a comedy review yeah. show, and uh, the delegates used to come and and oh, right. Yeah, uh, well, they used to laugh, and really we were sort of laughing at them, and they laughed along, yeah. and it kind of defeated the object a little. Yeah, bit. we saw Russell earlier. It was fantastic. It was great, wasn't it? it was fantastic really, really narrative, you know, a guy that can, he's got really good vocabulary, but like it's also the way that he uses it. Do you know what I mean? And he's very sort of like um, you could see he was listening. You know, when the questions went out, he picked up on every question. He, you know, he cared about everyone, and he really thought, you know. This is it, 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 that thing when he said, like, everyone's got something to say. It was, you know, that was real. That was proper. And do you reckon Labour are going to win, Mark, this time? Election soon? It's over. So, it, like, the, the, you know, we're looking like you don't know when it's going to happen. Seriously, they're on, they, they know it, the game's up. Everything, you know, they've got nothing left. That's why they, she's got no hope, Teresa. You know, that's why we call her hopeless Teresa. But, you know, we're just all hoping it happens sooner rather than later. Maybe we could have a happy Jesmus. It's really noticeable to see the way that people are engaging with the Labour Party and with political debate differently. The, the world transformed to what they have done when I've come down to Labour Party conferences in the past. What are you, what are you doing down here at Labour Party conference? Or are you just that the world transformed? Uh, well, I came on behalf of the Chelsea and Fulham delegation as a youth delegate, so I'm more or less uh, intending to come and see what the type of policies that uh, could be used in the future to hopefully empower the youth of South West London. So yeah, it's been an interesting ride so far. Yeah, how are you, you finding it? Is this your first conference? First conference, yeah. Wow, okay. How are you finding it? Education. You're learning a lot about the procedures, the different institutions, the rides, the, I guess, the very diverse nature of the Labour Party, which is always a pleasure to see, especially up front and personal. And are you seeing a big contrast between things like the World Transformed and what goes on in the main conference centre? No, I feel the World Transformed is a very unique platform that actually brings together a whole list of different, I guess, people from across the Labour family. So. I think uh, in comparison to the more technical bureaucratic labour stuff, it's a lot more exciting, but I feel they both need to reinforce one another. So, yeah, it's a breath of fresh air. And what made you join the Labour Party? <sighs> Good question. Empowerment. And so hopefully we can do something in the future that can at least be able to pass to our own children that is a lot more free than currently. So redistributive politics, I feel that's essentially the goal of the Labour Party. Do you feel optimistic about Labour's chances going forward? One hundred percent. I've never been more. Right. And Jeremy, you behind Jeremy Corbyn as the leader? Do you, do you like Jeremy Corbyn? As I feel leader? Jeremy Corbyn is a, I guess, he's a candidate that the likes of me and people in my generation have never seen before at this level. 
and I hope that he continues with his positive and transformative message for empowering the people of our country. The world it really is being transformed down here in Brighton. I bumped into Jamie Kelsey Fry, who I met via the Occupy movement, who is now dressed as a 1970s British Rail ticket inspector. Yep. So I'll to talk to him and find out what on earth is going on. <laughs> well, John, um, I, uh, okay, so I'm really interested in this campaign against HS2. So the high speed rail link from London to Birmingham that will then go on up to the north and according to John McDonald today will actually go on to Scotland. Uh, it's going to cost upwards of 200 billion, very likely much more than 200 billion. So in a time of austerity, if you say figures like that to disabled people against cuts or nurses or teachers, they are horrified at the idea of creating a rich man's railway line rather than using the money for what people desperately need at the moment, which is an end to austerity and other ways of improving this country. However, Money can be spent to improve our travel, our rail travel, by opening up lines that already exist in the north and by electrifying all the lines that they've decided not to electrify. So we can actually do much more jobs, create much more jobs for the train union people, the members of TSSA, ASLEF. Their lives can be improved a great deal while still wiping out HS2 and actually having more intelligent ways of investing that money. It's a boondoggle. That's the word for your viewers today, ladies and gentlemen. A boondoggle is like a neoliberal slate of hand con trick. Uh, it's also a kind of vanity project. So what's happening is you have a lot of snouts in the trough at the beginning. Two, three billion has already been spent on this project and the, 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 the earth hasn't even been cut yet. Two to three billion already spent and it's on consultancies. It's on KPMG. It's on building contractors. It's on getting together their, their, uh, their, the spec for all the jobs. Just a vast amount of money swashing around and there's a lot of snouts in that trough right now. And a boondoggle goes back to the kind of gold mining days and a boondoggle is when the deal is makes pump something up, hype something up. So there's a lot of money, a lot of flurry of activity, a lot of money being taken out at the beginning and then run before the poop hits the fan. And uh, we think that's what's happening, you know, and it's, it's a real insult to this country. And we would really love Jez to turn around on this. So one of the things that Jeremy Corbyn's got in his manifesto is yeah to HS2. But I've been outside that uh, conference centre for two days now, you know, giving out these tickets, wearing very authentic gear. And I'll, no exaggeration, John, 95% of people who've taken these tickets have gone totally agree with you mate I think it's a real rip-off so there's a disparity between the leaders of the Labour Party at the moment leaders of the unions and the members so we're trying to kind of rebalance that by gentle gentle great propaganda and discourse but I'm also here because I'm an occupier as you know and I've got to say when um, when that manifesto came out the Labour manifesto came out uh, you know for the many, not the few. That's, that's the 99%, you know. And um, so much of that manifesto was the initial statement from Occupy. You've got to remember, Occupy, our initial statement was not from leaders, not from a, a, a gang of uh, politics students who know who Deleuze is. It was three and a half thousand people over 48 hours using participatory democracy to come to an agreed statement. 100% consensus, three and a half thousand people eventually agreed on that statement and that statement is very similar to the Labour manifesto. So we don't support parties or politicians but we do support policies and there's a lot of very important policies for this country. So it's my first um, political conference and I'm really interested in, in seeing what conferences are like anyway but viewers this is not apparently I'm told that's not your normal party conference. You've got it's groovy you know what I mean it's a mixture between a party political conference and Edinburgh Fringe but less snooty than Edinburgh Fringe actually to be honest um, as a hell of a lot of young people because there is older you get there's a lot of young people anyway but there's a hell of a lot of young people here who are really switched on really excited about hope you know and hope was a, a real rare commodity until quite recently you know and um, so I'm here as a campaigner against HS2 I'm here as an occupier interested in seeing how this movement is developing you know momentum is meant to be about listening about being participatory and um, I'm also here as a new internationalist, you know, I work for new internationalists. We have a party. When he got voted in for the second time, Jeremy Corbyn, 
He said one world and he meant it. He's talking about internationalist decisions, decisions that affect what's happening in the world, not just in this country. You know, and his, his idea of foreign policy is really important to uh, new internationalists because rather than uh, dealing with the problems in the world by bombing them, um, instead they're dealing with problems in the world by let's consider diplomacy and peace and conversations like that. Let's not deal, let's not, not do any arms deals with Saudi Arabia, for example, you know. Uh, a guy who says, if I become Prime Minister on the first day, I will recognise Palestine. You know, this is really powerful stuff, you know. Someone who talks in an international way about stuff that really makes sense, ways that suggest we may have a sustainable future. Because until him, in this country, you know, if you're looking at what Theresa May was representing or what old Labour were representing, it's just an embarrassing, embarrassing way for this species to go. And I don't want this species to go because I think we've only just started. A new internationalist. StopHS2.org, occupy and uh, keep it lit. So I think this is the end of my, of my day down here at Labour Party Conference at Brighton. But really I was at the, the World Transformed, which was in itself a transformative event. That was a word that people kept saying again and again, transformative politics. And you can see it in action here, hugely inspiring day. The sun's setting and from talking to people here today, they'd say the sun is clearly setting on the Tory government and Theresa May's Premiership. And it will be rising on a new dawn led by a Jeremy Corbyn government.